Hey, welcome to part three of the Johnson Viking 2 CDC transmitter repair. In this video, I'm going to be powering up and testing the transmit function of the radio. So in part two, I replaced the filter capacitors for the 350 volt line plus the negative bias line. I also installed a new SO239 output jack. The other one was damaged. And then, of course, I had to trace down that short on the 350 volt line. That's all resolved. So now it is time to check the high voltage on the transmitter and see if it has any output. So in preparation to apply high voltage, I did have to replace one of the 5R4 tube sockets. It had arced and was also physically damaged. I also added insulators under those sockets to stop future arcing. High voltage filter cap has been replaced. This is the old oil filled type and this is a D-Lab C9 capacitor assembly. Also noticed that the screen resistor off the 807s was kind of hanging there when the lead was broke. So I've replaced that too. Here is the one that was removed. If you look to the terminal on the upper right, you'll see it's been arcing from that little rivet to the chassis. Let me show you why that happens. To the right is a socket that I just replaced and you'll see there's an insulative gasket around the top side of that one as compared to the one on the left. You can see that those rivets are very close to the edge of the aluminum so if any contamination gets in there they like to arc over to chassis. So the objective is put some more spacing between that chassis and those rivets. To solve the problem, I make these little spacers out of phenolic. You can do the same thing with a thin sheet of Teflon or nylon. You simply take out the hardware, slide this in between the socket and the chassis, problem solved. Once you remove the hardware from the socket, you take your spacer, you slide it in between, and put your hardware back in. Here's both sockets with the insulators installed. No more worries of arcing pins. The same fix will work on Heathkit transmitters, such as the Apache and the DX100. The 350 volt DC power supply to the audio section has been disconnected. The audio section still has those old wax caps and I don't want that to influence the testing. So we will not be testing the audio section, but I will be checking the modulator current. Alright, the Viking 2 is warmed up. I have a meter hooked up with just some jumper clips to the meter select switch so we can check the functions. So first, we'll check buffer. So adjust my oscillator, we have buffer current. And then now for my grid, my drive can adjust it, that's a good thing. Now we turn on the plate. I've got this set up on 80 meters crystal control. And there is the output. I'm only getting about 60 watts. Check my coupling here. It's even less. So I'm getting output, but lower than what's expected. Let's take a look at the modulation current. That's high. Should only be about 50 mils. And I am getting a dip, but it appears as though either high voltage is low or I'm not getting enough drive to the outputs. So we'll have to put that on the list. Troubleshoot, low output. All right, I've hooked up my meter to the high voltage cap assembly. I'm going to turn on the plate voltage and see what we get. Make sure our high voltage isn't low. We've got about 735 volts and that's fine so we either have a dry problem or possibly an issue with the clamper circuit so I just checked and the clamper pot was full clockwise so I returned it back close to its minimum position and now I've got full power out and a good plate dip so it was misadjustment of the clamper tube I've got full output all right, so things are looking very promising for this Viking 2 CDC. 
Next step, I need to pull out the old Johnson push to talk system and install a D Lab K1 module. Then we have to rebuild the audio section. All the wax caps need to come out. I have to install a new interstage transformer. Unfortunately, the one that's in there has an open primary. Best way to handle this is to gut the audio section, go by the schematic, and rebuild it. And that's what we'll be doing in part four. And we'll see if we can get some audio out of the Viking as well as a full RF output.